In this video, we're going to start learning how to calculate the pH of the analyte titrant mixture at specific points in titrations of strong acids or strong bases or weak acids or weak bases. In this video, we'll focus on titration of a strong acid with sodium hydroxide, a strong base. And a key point here with strong acid or base calculations in the context of titration is that no equilibrium is involved whatsoever. What's really happening in, for example, titration of a strong acid by a strong base is a reaction between hydronium in the strong acid analyte and hydroxide in the titrant. And so we don't need to worry about Ka, Kb, ice tables, Henderson-Hasselbach, none of that. It's pure stoichiometry and applying the definition of pH. pH is negative log of the hydronium concentration, for example. So here, we've got a volume of 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl. That's our analyte in our typical titration drawing here. And our titrant is 0.1 molar NaOH, and that's a strong base. So the titration reaction here, as a full molecular equation, you can think of it as HCl plus NaOH goes to NaCl and H2O. Although, conceptually, and really on the molecular level, I think it's helpful here to think about it as H3O plus reacting with OH minus to make two H2Os with Na plus and Cl minus as spectators. But this will work for our purposes, as we'll see. So we want to calculate the pH at four volumes of added titrant, added base solution, none when we just have the HCl solution, 12.5 milliliters, 25 milliliters, and 37.5 milliliters. And these are strategically chosen volumes, as we'll see, that are going to reveal important ideas to us. So first, no base added. What have we got? Well, we got a solution of HCl in water, where the hydronium concentration, due to complete dissociation of the strong acid HCl, is 0.1 moles per liter. Apply the definition of pH. The pH is initially 1. Very straightforward. What about 12.5 milliliters of hydroxide added? Well, here we need to think a little bit about stoichiometry and realize that the added hydroxide will consume some of the hydronium or some of the HCl, leaving us with a smaller concentration of hydronium than 0.1 moles per liter. How much smaller? Well, we've got to come at this from two directions. We've got to find the moles of hydronium that are remaining in the analyte titrate mixture and factor in that the volume of the solution has increased due to the addition of titrant. So the volume of the analyte titrant mixture is the original volume of the HCl solution plus the volume of sodium hydroxide solution added in. So let's start with that denominator because that's pretty straightforward. We're going to assume the volumes are additive. So I've got 0.02500 liters. That's the volume of the HCl solution we started with plus the added volume of hydroxide solution, 12.5 milliliters or 0.0125 liters. So that's just the total volume in the denominator. What moles of hydronium are present in the solution at this point? Well, it's the moles we started with, the amount we started with, minus the amount consumed. There's an initial final change idea going on here where the change is 0.1 molar hydroxide times the volume added. We subtract that amount consumed. This is the amount of hydroxide added, so it's equivalent to the amount of HCl or amount of hydronium consumed. We subtract that in red from the initial total number of moles of HCl here in blue, 0.1 mole per liter, which is right there, times 25 milliliters of the original analyte solution. So when we plug and chug through the numbers here, we get 0.033 moles per liter is the hydronium concentration in the analyte titrant mixture at this point. We simply apply the definition of pH, and now we see our pH has increased a little bit, not too surprising, to 1.478, a little bit higher than the initial pH of 1. What about 25 milliliters? Well, this is a special point. The concentrations of the HCl solution and NaOH solution are equal. They're both 0.1. And so when 25 milliliters of this NaOH solution have been added, we've exactly neutralized or exactly consumed all of the moles of HCl in the original solution or all of the moles of hydronium in the original solution. This is the equivalence point. So what's going on here? Well, rather than plugging and chugging through calculations, which may lead you down a problematic rabbit hole since it will appear that we have 
zero hydronium remaining, and how do you take the log of zero is going to lead you to a problematic place, realize that what we've got at this point is just an aqueous solution of Na plus and Cl minus. Here it's helpful, again, to think of hydroxide as neutralizing the hydronium ion that comes from HCl. With those completely neutralized, Na plus and Cl minus are the only significant ions remaining in this solution. We'll have 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter of hydronium and hydroxide, just as we would in neutral water. And so from the fact that NaCl is a neutral salt, we can immediately infer that the pH will be 7. We've essentially got a salt of a neutral, uh, a neutral salt dissolved in water at this equivalence point. Finally, let's talk about what happens when we've added 37.5 milliliters of hydroxide solution. Now, because the equivalence point occurred at 25 milliliters, 37.5 milliliters of hydroxide solution added corresponds to an excess hydroxide situation. We've consumed all of the hydronium, quote unquote, and we're just piling on the hydroxide at this point. This is on that leveling off portion of the titration curve. And here it's helpful to think about the concentration of hydroxide in the analyte titrant mixture and work from hydroxide back to hydronium or pOH back to pH. But again, we're just thinking in stoichiometric terms. How much hydroxide is there? Well, let's start by calculating the moles of hydroxide we've added, the total number of moles of hydroxide added, which is here in red, based on the concentration and the volume of solution added, and let's subtract off the moles of HCl that consumed a portion of that OH minus, right, which is the molarity of that, 0.1 mole per liter, times the 25 milliliters or 0.025 liters that we started with. And here again, to find the volume, we're going to add the initial volume of the analyte solution, 25 milliliters here in blue, to the volume of titrant solution added, 37.5 milliliters to get the total. When we chug through these numbers, we arrive at a hydroxide concentration of 0.02 moles per liter. And from this, we can infer the pOH by applying the definition of pOH, negative log of 0.02, and that's 1.699. And to find the pH, well, we just apply the relation between pH and pOH. pH is equal to 14, that's pKW, minus the pOH, and we get a pH of 12.301. And this should make sense. It's going to be well above 7, since at the equivalence point, we were at a pH of 7, and we've been piling on hydroxide into the solution. And it's quite high, because at this point, we've got a solution that is quite similar, actually, to the titrant itself, with a little bit of Na plus and Cl minus in there that are going to have a minimal effect on the pH. In fact, the only reason this pH is not equal to 13 is because of that original um, 25 milliliters of analyte solution that was uh, HCl solution, right? So we've diluted the titrant a little bit, so its pH is a little bit lower than 13. 